So this video is going to look at an overview of stats modeling that are relationship focused. So somewhere in your research question should be the word relationship or connection or correlation. How are things connected? And this is very different than the idea of difference testing. So it all is based on correlation. For a correlation, we are putting one variable compared to another variable and seeing how they are related. Negative relationships can be very good. Negative does not mean bad in this case. Zero relationship means that there is no connection between this one and this variable. And a positive relationship is just the opposite, saying as this one increases, this one increases. We do not have a dependent or an independent variable here. So there's just two continuous variables that we put together and want to see is the relationship between A and B. To be a little bit more fun, in my opinion, we can now try to predict that relationship. So we're going to take the same concept of X and Y, graph them together, add the line, but we are now going to graph the line and I can plug in values for X and X and now predict what y would be. This is a little bit different than correlation. Here we're just saying there's a relationship, it's strong, it's moderate, it's weak, I can explain this much and of this. Here we're actually able to give values. And with multiple regression, we can put in two or more independent variables. These are our predictors. There is only one dependent variable. And remember, a dependent variable is essentially your outcome variable. What is the focus that you're trying to understand? In our example down here, our dependent variable would be math scores, and all of these would be my independent variables that are trying to predict math. Logistic regression is a form of regression. Um, discriminant analysis is another type that is conceptually similar, just has stronger assumptions. But with this kind of analysis, we are trying to predict group membership. So our dependent variable is no longer continuous. It is now dichotomous, meaning there's two categories. You are either a member or you are not a member. Um, we can look at, did you graduate? Did you not graduate? Were you successful? Were you not successful? So some kind of a dichot, yes or no, you made it to this category or you're not in this category. Our independent variables are now predictors that could m move you into one category or another. So what are the predictors of graduation? What are all the different things that can lead you to graduate or to not graduate? What are the best predictors that you will graduate? Canonical correlation. Again, completely different concept. So here we have multiple variables on one side and multiple variables on the other. Going back to this one, this is just y, one continuous dependent variable. With canonical correlation, we're not really trying to predict, but we're trying to see how is this side, how is the combination of this side related to the combination of this side. If you like factor analysis and looking at scales, this is kind of one of your go-tos. It's really fun. What you're doing is you're looking at this set of items and how does this set of items relate to this set of items. And they tend to be constructs. So instead of just looking at a mean score here and how it relates to a mean score here, we're now allowing for all of the items to fluctuate within that and what items are better contributors to the combination and how that connects to the other contributor, best contributors of the other combination of scores. So two continue with at least two on each side, the more the merrier. So if we were looking at a scale of perseverance, so if we had 10 items that were about perseverance, and how does that relate to 10 items or five items or seven items, it doesn't have to be equal, um, about your experience with trauma. Differing correlations is probably one of my favorites. So we're going back to the very, very simple concept of correlation, but we're now breaking the correlation down by some group. In this case, if we merge these two, we might have an R value of, I don't know, 0.6. But when we break it down by gender, let's say that this is female, whatever relationship this is is much stronger for females, that's a strong correlation. 
versus for males, it was more of a moderate relationship at a 0.47. So we're taking the overall relationship and we're just breaking it down by groups. So I did this for my dissertation and my question was, does the correlation between assessment knowledge and assessment use differ based on teacher's content expertise? The data altogether had an R value that was moderate, so 0.45. As your knowledge increased, your use increased. What was interesting is when you break it down by content area, the R value, that relationship, seemed all over the place. Um, pretty strong for language arts and social studies and pretty weak for math and science, which was interesting. So the question would be, if this is the overall R, these are all of the different groups, do these relationships, are they significantly different from each other? So the relationship for math teachers significantly different than the relationship for language arts teachers. Unfortunately for my dissertation, I found out that they, there is no significant difference that I could find. Um, and I will say that that is probably based on sample size. Just didn't have enough in each group. So you do need a pretty good sample size to do this. There is an online calculator that will do this for you. You just have to do it all by hand so you don't anymore, which is very exciting. If I want to take the same concept, but now do regression. So here we are just separating the correlation by different groups. If I want to take that correlation and move it to regression, so I can do a multiple regression model, but I now want to split it by all of the schools in my district. So are all of the school predictors the same across the, the district? And is that regression line the same across all of the district? This is called Hierarchical Linear Modeling, HLM. This is exciting and super fun because instead of just having one regression line for all of Colorado, I can now break it down by two different districts and I can break those districts down by two different schools. So this analysis is things embedded in things embedded in things. So we could do, for example, students embedded in teachers and teachers embedded in schools. I can have student level predictors, I can have teacher level predictors, and I can have school level predictors. We can have all kinds of different hierarchies with things embedded in things. Really, really awesome analysis. Very complex. Structural equation modeling is another version of regression that is a higher, a higher level analysis, we'll say that. So this would be our regression line. So x4 would be our y, and that is our regression line for y. So we have multiple predictors for y, one, two, and three. You can see one, two, three predictors to try to get to our interest, which is job satisfaction. That would be our y, our dependent variable. But in order for x2, this variable right here is represented by an equation itself. And x3 is represented by an equation itself. So we're solving simultaneous equations, and it comes it ends up being really fun matrix algebra. But here's the concept. Does age predict job satisfaction? Or does the variable age flow through the variable income to land on job satisfaction? So in order to predict job satisfaction is better if age flows through income and then goes through. It doesn't mean that as you get older, you're more satisfied with your job. As you get older, in part, your income might be changing, and maybe those together affect job satisfaction. One dependent variable and multiple predictors, multiple independent variables. So the research questions can be varied, but here's two examples. So we would be looking at does age predict job satisfaction directly or indirectly via its effect on income and working autonomy? We can also look at what is the best hypothesis, in this case those would be paths, which one is the best predictor of job satisfaction. Here we have four different paths to job satisfaction. And these would all be established conceptually based on literature, based on practice, based on all kinds of different ideas. But this all together essentially is our hypothesis. So there's the path age to job satisfaction, 
Is that the best predictor? Or does age go through autonomy to job satisfaction? That's number two. Age through income to job satisfaction? Third hypothesis. Or is it age goes through autonomy, goes through income, and then to job satisfaction? Is that the best path? So four different hypotheses that we are testing at the same time. Another thing that SEM can do is look at the difference between mediator and moderator. And these are especially important when you are trying to establish causation. So if we want to say that this independent variable causes this dependent variable, we have to rule out that this effect doesn't flow through something else. In this case, the idea of if I have more constructive play as a child, Am I better at solving word problems? So constructive play causes word problems. Or does that effect of constructive play flow through spatial ability and then over? So do I need a strong spatial ability to influence this path? Moderator is a similar idea, but a moderator just kind of affects this relationship in the middle. It's not like the effect throws through it. It just is almost a barrier. It just messes with the analysis. These would be your confounding variables like we talked about within COVA. The example here, the use of an exercise app will hopefully cause you to exercise more or influence you to exercise more. So my Fitbit should cause me to walk more. But that is influenced, that is moderated by, that is messed with by barriers to exercise. So whatever my barriers to exercise is, that is going to interfere with this relationship. That's called a moderator. And that is all that we are going to talk about for relationship ideas.